Bird flight has fascinated humans for centuries, inspiring countless attempts to mimic their effortless movement through the air. Unlike airplanes, birds rely on flapping or oscillating wings to generate both lift and thrust, allowing them to perform complex maneuvers and adapt instantly to changing conditions. In this video we'll explore the unique aerodynamics of bird flight, examining how their wings, feathers, and tails work together to achieve what seems like magic. We'll also look at how modern research and technology have helped us understand these natural marvels, and why studying birds continues to inspire innovation in aviation and beyond. While airplanes have fixed wings, birds possess moving wings that can flap or oscillate, giving them a distinct advantage in maneuverability and efficiency. Early aviation pioneers like Otto Lilienthal and the Wright brothers studied bird wings, hopping to unlock their secrets. However, they soon realized that simply copying the shape of a bird's wing wasn't enough. Birds' wings are highly dynamic, capable of changing shape, area, and angle in response to flight demand. This adaptability allows birds to navigate turbulent winds, avoid obstacles, and track moving targets with remarkable precision, capabilities that fixed-wing aircraft can only dream of. Bird's wing is a marvel of natural engineering. Its basic structure is similar to a human hand, but with bones and proportions adapted for flight. The hand section of the wing provides most of the dynamic control, especially in small birds that need to maneuver in tight spaces. In larger birds, the arm bones play a bigger role, supporting soaring and gliding. The wing's integrity is maintained by flight feathers, which lock together during the downstroke to form a strong, continuous surface. This combination of bone structure and feather arrangement gives birds both strength and flexibility, essential for their varied flight styles. Bird wings are covered with specialized feathers, each playing a unique role in flight. The primaries attached to the bird's fingers are long and narrow and can be individually rotated. These feathers generate most of the thrust during the downstroke and reduce resistance during the upstroke. Secondaries, connected to the ulna, help create the wing's airfoil shape and provide lift. The allula, a small set of feathers on the bird's thumb, acts like a slat on an airplane wing, preventing stalls at low speeds or during landing. Together, these feathers allow birds to morph their wing shape for different flight situations. Each flight feather is a complex structure, with a shaft that bends slightly off its axis and veins that lock together using tiny hooklets. This design allows feathers to rotate within their follicles, opening during the upstroke to let air pass through and reduce resistance. During the downstroke, the feathers lock to form a solid surface, maximizing lift and thrust. The ability to rotate and separate feathers is crucial for efficient flight, especially in birds that need to maneuver quickly or fly at slow speeds. This intricate feather anatomy is a key factor in the versatility of bird flight. Bird wings are highly flexible, capable of changing both their cord and span, as well as twisting and bending along their length. This flexibility is made possible by the many degrees of freedom in the wrist and elbow joints, combined with the arrangement of feathers. Birds can instantly adjust their wing shape to maintain optimal airflow, reduce drag, and maximize lift. This morphing ability is especially important during rapid maneuvers such as avoiding obstacles or responding to sudden gusts of wind. The result is a wing that can adapt to virtually any flight situation, giving birds unmatched agility. Wingbeat cycle in birds consists of two main phases, the downstroke and the upstroke. The downstroke, often called the power stroke, is when the wing moves downward, generating most of the lift and thrust. The upstroke is a recovery phase where the wing returns to its starting position with minimal resistance. The motion of the wings is complex, with the outer part twisting and changing profile to maintain the optimal angle of attack. This ensures that each part of the wing contributes effectively to flight, whether the bird is cruising, hovering, or landing. During the downstroke, the bird's wing moves downward and forward, increasing the angle of attack and generating both lift and thrust. The outer part of the wing twists and changes shape, directing aerodynamic forces forward and propelling the bird through the air. This phase is crucial for maintaining altitude and speed, especially during takeoff or rapid maneuvers. The inner part of the wing close to the body moves less and acts more like a fixed wing, providing continuous lift throughout the cycle. This division of labor within the wing ensures efficient flight at all times. Upstroke phase is all about minimizing drag and preparing for the next power stroke. Birds partially fold their wings and open the primary feathers, allowing air to pass through and reducing resistance. The angle of attack is decreased and the wingspan is shortened, making the upstroke as efficient as possible. Despite being a recovery phase, the inner part of the wing continues to provide lift, ensuring that the bird doesn't lose altitude between downstrokes. This clever division of function allows birds to maintain smooth, continuous flight with minimal energy loss. Birds can rapidly change the area of their wings to suit different flight needs. Seabirds, for example, can switch from fully extended wings for cruising to tightly folded wings for diving in an instant. During landing, birds raise the inner part of the wing, decreasing the area and increasing stability. By adjusting wing area, birds can lower aerodynamic load and reduce the risk of flow separation, which is crucial for safe and efficient flight. This ability to morph wing area is a key adaptation that allows birds to thrive in diverse environments. Many birds, especially those that soar over land, have slotted wingtips formed by spreading their primary feathers. These slotted tips act like winglets on airplanes, reducing induced drag by spreading verticity both horizontally and vertically. This adaptation allows birds to have shorter, lighter wings that are more maneuverable without sacrificing lift. In contrast, seabirds often have longer, narrower wings with pointed tips to minimize drag at higher speeds. The diversity in wing tip design reflects the different challenges birds face in their respective habitats. 
Birds have several ways to instantly increase lift or break during flight. By spreading their tail and adjusting the camber of their wings, they can generate more lift or slow down rapidly. The tail acts as an integral part of the lifting system, especially during slow flight or landing. Underwing coverts, a set of feathers along the leading edge, can open automatically at high angles of attack, functioning like high lift devices on airplane wings. These adaptations allow birds to perform precise landings and takeoffs, even in challenging conditions. Takeoff is one of the most energetically demanding maneuvers for birds. Small birds often jump into the air to gain initial lift, while larger birds may take a running start or face into the wind to achieve takeoff velocity. Birds perched on branches or cliffs can simply drop off to begin flying. These strategies minimize the energy required for takeoff and allow birds to launch quickly in response to threats or opportunities. The ability to take off efficiently is crucial for survival, especially in environments with predators or limited space. Ending poses its own set of challenges, especially for large birds with high airspeeds. To lose height and velocity before landing, birds often use side slip through a series of controlled wing beats. During the final approach, the tail is spread wide and the wings are extended to maximize lift and slow descent. Just before perching, the tail moves upward, pushing the bird into a stall and allowing a gentle landing. These coordinated movements ensure safe and precise landings, even in difficult conditions. The bird's tail is more than just a steering device, it's an integral part of the lifting system. Positioned close to the trailing edge of the wing, the tail can change its area and aspect ratio to maintain stability and balance, especially during slow flight or landing. By spreading the tail, birds enhance airflow over the wings, similar to how flaps work on airplanes. The tail also acts independently as a control surface, helping birds make quick adjustments in direction and altitude. Birds possess natural high lift devices in the form of underwing coverts and the allula. These feathers deploy automatically at high angles of attack, increasing the wing's camber and preventing stalls. This is similar to the function of slats and flats on airplane wings, which are used to increase lift during takeoff and landing. The ability to deploy these devices instantly gives birds a significant advantage in challenging flight situations, allowing them to maintain control and avoid accident. Covert feathers, located along the leading edge of the wing, play a crucial role in controlling airflow. At high angles of attack, these feathers can raise up automatically, acting like spanwise fences that prevent flow separation and stall. This self-activating mechanism helps birds maintain lift even in demanding flight conditions, such as rapid climbs or sharp turns. The covert feathers' ability to respond instantly to aerodynamic forces is a testament to the sophistication of bird wing design. The allula, a small cluster of feathers attached to the bird's thumb, acts like a leading-edge slat on an airplane wing. When deployed, it creates a gap that allows smooth airflow over the wing at high angles of attack, preventing stalls during slow flight or landing. This simple yet effective adaptation enables birds to fly safely at low speeds and perform precise landings. The allula's function highlights the remarkable parallels between bird and aircraft wing design. Into vortices are swirling air currents generated at the tips of a bird's wings during flight. While these vortices can increase drag, in some birds with low aspect ratio wings, they actually enhance lift. The downward velocity behind the bird known as downwash increases lift, while the upward velocity outside the wake can be used by following birds in a V-formation to save energy. This clever use of aerodynamics allows migrating birds to travel long distances with less effort. When birds fly close to the ground or water surface, they experience a phenomenon known as ground effect. This effect increases lift and reduces mechanical power required for flight by as much as 35%. Ground effect is especially beneficial during takeoff and landing, giving birds a performance boost when they need it most. The ability to exploit ground effect is another example of how birds have evolved to maximize their flight efficiency in various environments. Migrating birds often fly in V formation to take advantage of the upward velocity field created by the downwash of the bird in front. This formation allows each bird to save energy by riding the lift generated by its neighbor, reducing the overall effort required for long-distance travel. The V formation is a striking example of cooperative behavior and aerodynamic efficiency in the animal kingdom. Fly birds must impart downward momentum to the surrounding air, generating lift by reaction. This process is governed by Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The lift force counterbalances the bird's weight and is influenced by factors such as wing area, curvature, angle of attack, and feather manipulation. By adjusting these variables, birds can control the amount of lift generated, allowing for precise control during flight. Birds with high aspect ratio wings, such as condors and albatrosses, are masters of soaring flight. These long narrow wings minimize tip vortices and maximize lift, making them ideal for gliding over long distances with minimal energy. During the downstroke, two counter rotating vortices are generated along the leading and trailing edges, driving air downward and creating lift. This efficient wing design allows these birds to travel vast distances over land or sea. Birds with low aspect ratio wings, such as passerines, rely on a different aerodynamic strategy. Their shorter broader wings generate stronger tip vortices, which can actually enhance lift in certain situations. These wings are more maneuverable, allowing birds to roll and yaw quickly, an advantage in cluttered environments like forests. The interaction between tip vortices and spanway shedding vortices creates a complex wake structure, reflecting the dynamic nature of bird flight. The wake left behind a flying bird is a footprint in the atmosphere, revealing much about its flight mechanics. In high aspect ratio wings, the wake consists of organized vortex couples that drive air downward, generating lift. In low aspect ratio wings, the wake is more chaotic, with tip vortices dominating the flow. The structure of the wake depends on wing shape, aspect ratio, and flight speed, making each bird's wake unique. Lift and drag are the two main components of the aerodynamic force acting on a bird's wing. Lift acts perpendicular to the direction of flight, supporting the bird's weight, while drag acts parallel to the airflow-resisting motion. 
The balance between lift and drag determines the efficiency of flight. Birds optimize this balance by adjusting wing shape, angle of attack, and feather position, ensuring smooth and energy-efficient movement through the air. Bird flight is characterized by unsteady, three-dimensional wing motions that change constantly with each wing beat. Traditional aerodynamic analysis often assumed quasi-steady conditions, but recent research shows that unsteady effects are crucial for understanding how birds generate lift and thrust. These effects are especially important during rapid maneuvers, takeoff, and landing, where the forces on the wings change rapidly from moment to moment. Hind fixed wings or blunt bodies, the wake often forms a pattern known as a Karman vortex street, a series of alternating vortices that produce drag. However, when a wing flaps or oscillates, the vortex pattern can change. At higher frequencies, the vortices acquire an opposite sense of rotation, creating an inverted Karman vortex street that generates thrust instead of drag. This phenomenon is key to understanding how birds and other animals achieve efficient flapping flight. Wakes behind flapping wings are far more complex than those behind fixed wings. Both the downstroke and upstroke contribute to the overall wake pattern, and the structure of the wake depends on the bird species and flight gait. The tertials or feathers closest to the body often act as fixed wings, providing weight support throughout the wingbeat cycle. Recent studies have shown that even the wingtips can generate thrust during the upstroke, adding to the complexity of bird flight. Studying bird flight experimentally has long been a challenge, but advances in technology have made it possible to observe and measure the forces involved. High-speed cinematography and miniaturized cameras mounted on birds have provided new insights into flight mechanics. Wind tunnel experiments allow researchers to measure lift and drag directly, while digital particle image velocimetry PIV, reveals the structure of wakes behind flying birds. These experimental methods have revolutionized our understanding of bird aerodynamics. Wind tunnel experiments are essential for studying the aerodynamics of bird flight. Birds are trained to fly in controlled conditions, allowing researchers to measure lift, drag, and wake patterns with precision. These tests have revealed the importance of unsteady forces and the role of feathers in controlling airflow. By comparing experimental data with computational simulations, scientists can develop more accurate models of bird flight, leading to new insights and application. Digital Particle Image Velocimetry, PIV, is a cutting-edge technique used to visualize airflow around flying birds. By seeding the air with tiny particles and illuminating them with lasers, researchers can capture detailed images of the flow patterns and vortices generated by the wings. This method provides a direct view of the complex interactions between feathers, airflow, and wake, offering valuable data for both biology and engineer. Aerodynamic Force Platform, AFP, is a specialized wind tunnel designed to measure the forces on a bird's wing during flight. By enclosing the bird in a box instrument with load cells, researchers can directly measure the net aerodynamic force generated during takeoff, landing, and steady flight. This innovative approach provides new insights into the unsteady forces at play and helps validate computational models of bird flight. Recent advances have made it possible to measure pressure distribution directly on a bird's wing during flight. By implanting tiny pressure transducers and accelerometers, researchers can track how forces change throughout the wingbeat cycle. These in vivo measurements reveal how different parts of the wing contribute to lift and thrust, and how birds adjust their wing shape in real time to optimize performance. Understanding the mechanics of bird flight also requires measuring the work and power output of flight muscles. By surgically implanting strain gauges and sound micrometry crystals, scientists can monitor muscle force and length changes during flight. These measurements provide a detailed picture of how birds generate the power needed for takeoff, sustained flight, and rapid maneuvers, deepening our understanding of the biomechanics of flight. High-speed cameras have revolutionized the study of bird flight, capturing detailed sequences of takeoff, landing, and in-flight maneuvers. These films reveal the subtle adjustments birds make with their wings, tail, and body to maintain stability and control. By analyzing these sequences frame by frame, researchers can uncover the secrets of bird agility and precision, providing inspiration for new technologies in robotics and aviation. Computational fluid dynamics, CFD simulations are a powerful tool for studying bird flight. By modeling the airflow around wings and feathers, researchers can predict lift, drag, and wake patterns under different conditions. CFD complements experimental data, allowing scientists to test hypotheses and explore scenarios that are difficult to replicate in the lab. This synergy between experiment and simulation is driving new discoveries in bird aerodynamics. Study of bird flight has inspired the design of micro-air vehicles, MAVs, small autonomous or remotely controlled flying machines. MAVs operate at similar Reynolds numbers as birds, making avian aerodynamics directly relevant to their design. By mimicking the flapping and morphing wings of birds, engineers hope to create MAVs that are agile, efficient, and capable of operating in complex environments where traditional aircraft cannot go. Birds have been a source of inspiration for aircraft designers since the earliest days of aviation. Modern airplanes incorporate features such as winglets, slats, and flaps that mimic the functions of bird feathers and wing morphing. As our understanding of bird aerodynamics deepens, new technologies are emerging that bring us closer to achieving the agility and efficiency of natural flyers. Despite significant advances, many challenges remain in the study of bird flight. The complexity of unsteady three-dimensional wing motions, the variability between species, and the difficulty of conducting controlled experiments all pose obstacles. However, ongoing research using advanced imaging, modeling, and experimental techniques continues to push the boundaries of our knowledge, promising new breakthroughs in both biology and engineering. The future of bird flight research lies at the intersection of biology, physics, and engineering. By combining insights from experimental studies, computational models, and technological innovation, scientists hope to unlock even more secrets of avian aerodynamics. These discoveries will not only deepen our appreciation for the wonders of nature, but also drive advances in aviation, robotics, and beyond.
Earthflight is a living laboratory for the study of fluid dynamics. The interplay between wings, feathers, and airflow offers endless opportunities for discovery and innovation. By studying how birds generate lift and thrust, control drag, and adapt to changing conditions, researchers are gaining new insights into the fundamental principles of flight, insights that have applications far beyond the animal kingdom. Nature has spent millions of years perfecting the art of flight. Birds have evolved a remarkable array of adaptations that allow them to soar, hover, dive, and maneuver with ease. By studying these adaptations, scientists and engineers are learning valuable lessons about efficiency, flexibility, and resilience, lessons that can be applied to everything from aircraft design to robotics and renewable energy. Beyond the science and engineering, bird flight is a source of wonder and inspiration. The grace and agility of birds in motion remind us of the beauty and complexity of the natural world. Whether soaring high above the earth or darting through a forest, birds demonstrate the power of adaptation and the endless possibilities of flight. Summary The aerodynamics of bird flight is a rich and fascinating field, blending biology, physics, and engineering. From the structure of wings and feathers to the complexities of lift, drag, and wake, birds have much to teach us about the art and science of flying. As research continues, we can look forward to new discoveries that will not only advance our understanding of nature, but also inspire innovations that shape the future of flight.